Yeah, we will start session in next one or two minutes. Okay. 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 Good evening all. Myself CMA Vinay Kulkani along with CMA Ashish Bhavsa welcome you for the series of webinars on income tax. Today's topic for the series of income tax webinar is income of individual to include income of spouse, minor child etc. The speaker for the today's webinar is CMA Amit Shani. With this, I will request Jamie Amishane to start the session. Uh, thank you, Vinayak sir, and thank you, Ashish, for this opportunity. Um, without wasting much time, I'll straight away move to the presentation. Just confirm me whether you are able to see the screen. Can you see the screen now? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My uh, okay. My internet speed is uh, really very bad today, so maybe there could be some delay in the presentation. Uh, and uh, just let me know if my voice is not clear because I am facing a lot of connectivity issue today. Uh, anyway, so we'll uh, start for today's session. Uh, okay. Today's session, like, uh, there are actually three parts. One is uh, clubbing, then uh, set up, and third part is uh, carry forward of process. So we'll begin with the first uh, topic that is clubbing of income. Now, typically, as per Income Tax Act, uh, whatever income that you earn, on that you are supposed to pay the tax. So this is a rule. But there are certain exceptions wherein even if it is not directly your income, still that income gets clubbed in your income. And on that total income, that is your own income, plus this club income, you are supposed to pay the taxes. So what sort of uh, income are clubbed and what are the various situations that we are going to discuss uh, in the first uh, session? First condition or first case is the transfer of income without transfer of asset. Transferring the asset, you are only transferring the income without the transfer of asset. So, what are the prerequisites or what are the conditions? The taxpayer owns an asset. The ownership of asset is not transferred by him. In other words, he has retained the ownership of the asset. The income from such asset is transferred to any person under a settlement, trust, covenant, agreement, or arrangement. The above transfer may be revocable or may not be revocable. The above transfer may be effected at any time, maybe before the commencement of the income tax or after the commencement of that, that is before or after 1st April 1962. If all the above conditions are satisfied, income from asset would be taxable in the hands of transferor. Now let's take an example. Suppose you have a fixed deposit in a particular bank and you have given an instruction to the bank that whatever interest is accrued on this particular fixed deposit should be credited to Mr. Y. Now, bank will follow those instructions and that interest will be credited to Y's account. But what has happened is the fixed deposit is still in the name of Mr. X. So he has not transferred the fixed deposit or he has not transferred the asset to Y. So without 
transferring the asset he has just transferred the income arising out of that particular asset to mr y now technically though the income is received by y the clubbing provisions will get attracted and in this case transferer that is mr x who is transferring the interest without transferring really the fixed deposit in his income this income on fixed deposit or interest on fixed deposit will be club so this is the first situation wherein there is only a transfer of income without transfer of asset now second case is revocable transfer now what is revocable and what is irrevocable revocable means there is a condition attached to it and irrevocable means there is a conditional transfer transfer that means in other words we can say it is a kind of permanent transfer then in those cases this clubbing provisions won't get attracted but in case of revoc revocable transfer that means uh, the word itself is revocable that means you still have some voice or you still have some uh, condition by which you can get back that asset which you have transferred upon fulfillment or non fulfillment so what are this uh, situations if an asset is transferred under a trust and it is revocable during the lifetime of the beneficiary that means and you had or uh, you had transferred an asset to a trust and you have the instruction to the trust that whatever income is generated out of this particular uh, asset should be transferred to say mr y who is the beneficiary of that particular income now whenever you have transferred that asset to a trust and there is a condition that any time during the lifetime of that particular beneficiary you have a right to revoke such transfer then in that case even if that uh, asset is actually transferred to a trust still the clubbing provisions will get attracted secondly if an if an asset is transferred to a person and it is revocable during the lifetime of the transferee that means in the first case it was during the lifetime of the beneficiary in the second case it is during the lifetime of the transferee now there could be several conditions attached to it so either on the as i said either on the fulfillment of condition or non fulfillment of condition if you have a right to take back that asset or to revoke that transfer then the clubbing provisions will get attracted then if an asset is transferred before 1st april 1961 and it is revocable within 6 years what is the relevance of this date this is the date on which the income tax act got enacted and the asset is transferred prior to enactment of prior to income tax act came into force but if it is revocable within 6 years then also this clubbing provisions will get attracted and if the transfer contains any provision to retransfer the asset or income therefrom to the transferer directly or indirectly wholly would or partly then also this clubbing provisions will get attracted so in short whenever there is an transfer of asset under a revocable or if that transfer is revocable transfer in any of the situations given above then the clubbing provisions will get attracted the income of aforesaid asset will be taxable in the hands of transferer now please note that let's take an example that a year back that asset has been transferred and with a condition that upon fulfillment or non fulfillment of that particular condition the transferer has a right to revoke that asset now for this one year he has not exercised his power of revocation so in this first year this clubbing provisions won't get attracted so when clubbing provisions will get attracted the moment he gets the power to revoke at that time it will be 
the the clubbing provisions will get attracted so let's take an example let's suppose you have uh, transferred an asset for the beneficiary of your parents with the instruction to the trust that you should transfer every month or whatever medical bills will be there that you will for the first year that trust has transferred whatever agreed sum to your parents but in the second year happened that consequently consecutively for two months they have not transferred the money to your parents now this is a breach of contract and now you are right to revoke arises so when the clubbing provisions will get attracted the moment your power to revoke is uh, uh, arises from that point it will be uh it will the clubbing provisions will be applicable now is this point carefully that uh, in the example which i gave after two months the is now exercisable now whether x exercises the power or not that is immaterial the moment that power to exercise is established from that date onwards the clubbing provisions will be attracted so as i said for consecutively consecutively for two months the trust can not be to your parents and that she has a substantial interest in the concern that is 20% or more share capital or 20% or more share in profit or 20% or more voting power the spouse of the taxpayer that is husband or wife of the taxpayer is employed in the above mentioned concern spouse is employed in the concern without technical salary is paid to the spouse that will be taxable in the hands of taxpayer now there are a lot of litigations in this particular matter because uh, experience is something that is always one can challenge because uh, technical or professional knowledge is something that you can always prove or uh, you, you even the income tax department can prove that if that prescribed qualification uh accounts in charge and she is just 10 pass so obviously that is one way of proving that she is not a capable person to handle the accounts to function as such but when it comes to experience there are a lot of litigations on this particular matter that uh, suppose i am a 10 pass uh, person but still and let's say for last 15 years i am working in a uh, organization and started from a clerk and uh, i have after 15 years i have reached to that particular position so when the question arises whether i have got the relevant experience or not the answer case laws on this particular matter wherein it comes to experience so the point say point uh, is whatever the remuneration 
situation for example let's say uh, a partnership firm both husband and wife are more than 20% shareholder or you can say having profit share of more than 20% so let's take, a, uh, take an example that x and mrs x are partner in a partnership firm both are having more than 20% share so let's let's take an example that both are having 50 50% share in profit both are not qualified or both are not having any relevant experience and both are paid the remuneration now the question arises that in whose income <coughs> the clubbing should be attracted or clubbing should be done so the provision says that what income other than this remuneration should be seen so for example let's say x and mrs x take the total income from this total income subtract the remuneration part and whatever remains whosoever is having more income so barring this remuneration let's say mr x is having more income so remuneration of mrs x will be clubbed in the hands of mr x right so and once it is clubbed in the first year it will continue to be clubbed in the hands of mr x even if subsequently mrs x is having more income than mr x so that is the provision as far as the remuneration to spouse is concerned now the next point is asset transfer directly or indirectly to spouse by an individual without adequate consideration now the first point in this that we saw was transfer of income without transfer of asset now in this case there is a transfer of asset but a transfer of asset secondly transfer is to spouse now what is direct transfer everyone understands that let's say x has transferred the asset to mrs x so this is a direct transfer and what is indirect transfer mr x has first transferred his uh, the to say that income or has transferred that to mrs x so this is an indirect transfer so rather than directly transferring to uh, mrs x it is routed through say y so both indirect transfers are included in this particular uh, provision now what are the conditions we'll quickly see then we'll see some example a uh, transfer is an individual an asset other than a house property is transferred now why house property is excluded from this because under house property income from house property specific provision of deemed income and in that case if the house property is transferred to a spouse without adequate consideration it falls under that deeming provisions under the head house property and therefore here when it comes to clubbing of income any asset other than house property is considered so house property is excluded from this scope because under section 27 there is specific provision for this then relationship of husband and wife so there has to be husband and wife relationship so obviously in case of a divorce case if the asset is transferred as a part of the divorce proceeding then obviously this clubbing provisions won't get attracted uh, discuss and it has to be without adequate consideration now there was a case law on this particular matter wherein the assessee claimed that i have transferred the asset to my wife out of the natural love and affection towards my wife in this case the court held that nothing doing natural love and affection cannot be considered as an adequate consideration so even if uh, you claim that i have transferred the asset uh, out of the natural love and affection that stand won't be accepted and still the clubbing provisions will get attracted now 
it is not necessary that whenever any asset is transferred it should be retained in the same manner or in the same state for example let's say uh, you have transferred uh, a fixed deposit of say 10 lakh rupees to your spouse and there is no consideration received from your wife now this 10 lakh rupees your wife has invested in a business so it is not necessary that in order to uh, let's say attract this particular provision the investment should be kept in the same form or in the same head for example uh, fixed deposit is income from other sources but it is not necessary that it should be kept in the same uh, fixed deposit business and in turn she whatever income she gets from that particular business that will be left in the hands of husband now obviously uh, let's identity of the transferred asset may or may not remain the same it may change and still the clubbing provisions will get attracted similarly like spouse if you are transferring any asset for the benefit of spouse then also this clubbing provisions will get attracted and similarly if you are transferring the asset directly for the benefit of son's wife or you are directly or indirectly transferring to son's wife then also this now typically what it will it, it will include let's say if you have some fixed deposit in the name of minor so whatever interest is there that will be clubbed in the hands of the father similarly other income whatever income is generated by that minor child that will be clubbed in the hands of father or mother whosoever is having more income excluding this minor income now in case whosoever parent is maintaining that child in his hand or in her hand the income will be clubbed but in case both the parents are not alive then clubbing provisions will not get attracted so let's say there is a guardian or there is a relative or uh, there are grandparents of that particular child uh, who are maintaining that uh, minor child so in that case it won't be clubbed in the hands of that uh, grand grandparents or relative or even for that matter in the hands of that minor child so the clubbing provisions will get attracted only when either mother or father or both of them are alive then there is an exemption up to 1500 per month uh, per uh, minor child this is an per annum uh, exemption exemption that you get however there are certain exceptions to this uh, number 1 income of child suffering from any disability uh, as specified in section 80u section 80u talks about uh, a disability so if any minor child is a special child or let's say is having some physical disability as certified by the doctor then whatever income is generated from the the minor child that won't be or the clubbing provisions won't get attracted then uh, income on account of any manual work by uh, the minor child 
again there won't be any uh, loving provisions for this and income on account of any activity involving application of a skill talent specified knowledge and experience so typically all this uh, reality shows wherein uh, uh, let's say he performs some dance or any artwork and from that he if he gets any award and all that in that case this clubbing provisions won't get attracted then last two points about uh, clubbing of income and then we'll move to the next topic or the question arises that when we say income can negative income be also clubbed and the answer to this is yes so let's say if the minor child is having negative income that is in case there is a loss then in that case even the loss will be loss will be clubbed in the hands of father or mother as the case may be and the last point is under which head it should be clubbed so for this the process is we should do the calculation of that minor child as if the income is taxable in its hand and then the income should be clubbed in the hands of father or mother as the case may be in which otherwise the minor child would have been chargeable to tax so for example if it is other sources then the income will be clubbed under other sources if it is business income it will be clubbed under business income if, if it is capital gain if it, it will be capital gain so under the respective head it will be clubbed and uh, it is not that uh, whatever income he generates or whatever income is clubbed that, that will be clubbed under say income from other sources no it is not the case in, it, it will be club in that respective head of income only right so this is as far as clubbing of income is concerned uh, any doubts in this yes any doubts yeah uh, actually there is some disturbance uh, as far as my connectivity is concerned and plus there is some civil work going on uh, just above uh, my floor so there could be some disturbance i am very sorry for that yes uh, any doubts or shall we move ahead for set off and carry forward okay so there is no response i am assuming that there are no uh, uh, questions on this particular clubbing of income as such now we'll move to the next part that is first part is set off of losses and second part is carry forward of losses now as far as set off is concerned the general rule for set off or first thing is we'll see first the inter source adjustment now what is inter source adjustment we'll see the general rule first if the net result for any assessment year in respect of any source under any head of income is a loss the assessee is entitled to have the amount of such loss set off against the income for any source under the same head of income for same assessment year now what does this mean let's take an example that mr a is a proprietor and he is having three different proprietorships let's say hotel then second is trading concern and third one is consulting income okay now he being a proprietor all this three source under the same head that is under the head business it may happen that in a trading concern he is having a loss and in a hotel and in consultancy he is having a profit so the rule says whatever loss is generated out of the trading concern that can be set off against the uh, profit from consulting income and hotel income so this 
this is what is inter source adjustment that is within the same now please keep this in mind that whatever sequence we are discussing we will have to follow the same sequence what does that mean maybe after two three slides i'll again come back to this particular point in short first you will have to do inter source adjustment now in spite of doing inter source adjustment if there is still some loss or there is still some negative income then you should go to to inter head adjustment point however in inter source adjustment also there are certain exceptions so let's see those exceptions quickly the first exception is losses from speculative business can be set off only against profit of speculative business so what does that mean for example <coughs> uh, you are doing some gambling or you are doing some uh, say uh, similar kind of business wherein some kind of speculation is uh, involved for example let's say uh, india australia match is going on and there is a betting that you do so this is a speculative loss from speculative business then it can be set off only against profit from speculative business only so speculative loss cannot be set off against non speculative or uh, business however the other one is so one cannot set off the losses of speculative business with the income from any business or profession so it has to be only against the speculative business only then loss from a specified business now you may be aware about section 35 ad so 35 ac and subsequently introduced 35 ed so if the government feels that for certain class of industry or certain class of business should be promoted so typically they will give the tax holidays to those businesses for example uh, there were uh, cases of say multi uh, taxes or star hotel and above then uh, laying pipeline for natural gas so there are various uh, businesses which are listed in section 35 and for that there is a tax holiday that means either for 3 years or 5 years depending upon the provision the uh, even if there is a profit then that business is not supposed to pay any taxes so this is these are the tax holidays now if there is a loss from the specified business then it cannot be set off against any other business other than specified business only so let's say you are having cold chain facility which is a specified business and you have a uh, say which is not specified so if you have got a loss from it can be set off only against some so loss from specific business cannot be set up against any ordinary business third point is long term capital loss so long term capital loss can be set up however there is no restriction on set so short term capital loss can be set up against long term capital gain or short term capital fourth exception is loss from an activity of owning and maintaining resources will be set up only against profit from an activity of owning and maintaining resources so uh, if two or three businesses of maintaining owning or maintaining the resources then if there is a loss from the business then it can be set up Oh, 
So on two lakh rupees, you have to. Not be set off against any other head or other inner head. This means uh, not possible. And loss from reserves can be set off against uh, income chargeable to tax. So typically there are certain revenue now, and this is a source that you cannot set off against the income which is so this particular system are there. Within the same way, we have done the inter-source investment, and despite of that, there is still some work which is So the next point or the next option that you have is the head investment from one head to another head. As I said, uh, like just few minutes back, I made a statement. This clone will have to be followed. So if you do the inter-source adjustment, still there is some cost which is put over. Then only you should, or then only you can go for the inter-head adjustment. That cannot do the inter-head adjustment without the inter-source adjustment. What is the inter-head adjustment? If the net result of any assessment is not in the of the loss, the assessment is intended to have an amount of such loss to set up against. Is income under any head of income state assessment. So generally, if you have a loss under one head, you can set up you can set up that loss against the so, uh, so the next question. So point number point number two are C. Simply part of the four, it's same, so I'll not uh, much. So, two okay. are the same set of source investment. So, I'll not mention again the name of that. Let's come to point number three. Off under the head capital gain cannot be against in set capital gain. So, let's say if you have a Short term loss or long term loss can be set up against any other head of income. Now let's understand the reason behind it. The capital in certain cases, short term capital gain is chargeable at a special rate. Let's take an example of the salary. Salary income is chargeable at a regular rate. As a special rate, Actually, it means flat rate of tax. The salary follows the income tax slabs. So that's the primary reason why this stuff is not capital gain can be set off against any other head capital gain. Or number four, we have already seen this loss cannot be set off against salary. Uh, some uh, what used to happen was suppose I'm a pension and I'm working with a company. So 
best to do was to show that on the end, on the end, doing some consulting business. What is the income from that consulting business? They say the receipts are full of capital. Then repairs and maintenance of the car, then my mobile expenses, depreciation on my laptop, repairs of uh, computer, printer, and all that. So those expenses used to be say 10 lakh rupees. So income is to expenses are 10 lakh rupees. I end up having a loss of 8 and this 8 lakh rupees I used to set off against the salary income. So this was clearly a case of tax evasion because uh, in most of the cases, I'm not saying uh, all the cases were like that, but in most of the cases, the uh, provision was misused. And since there is hardly any scope for tax planning in salary, what people started doing was they started Income tax, when they came to know about this particular practice, they immediately amended the section. And now, uh, if you are having a business loss, the same as or profession loss, then that cannot be set off against your salary income. So this was an amendment which was done in order to stop this kind of uh, practices. Right? Then the next point is uh, house property loss exceeding rupees 2 lakhs. Now, there is a confusion regarding this particular provision. Uh, now, just to explain this particular provision, I will slightly go back to house property. Now, in house property, typically there are three types of uh, house properties. One is self-occupied, second is deemed to be let out, and third one. So, in case of self-occupied property, can claim is interest on borrowed capital up to rupees 2 lakh rupees okay now in case of a let out property there is no restriction on this you can still claim the full deduction okay so let's take an example that if you are having say 2 lakh rupees of rental income and against that you have a 5 lakh rupees of, uh, say, interest. So even today, this 5 lakh rupees, you can take a benefit and 2 lakh minus 5 lakh, your net income will be a loss of 3 lakh rupees. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, what they have done is, they have restrict or they have not amended the section 24B of income tax. What is that 24B? Basically, the deduction of interest. What they did is the set of provision as far as the house property is concerned. Provision house property loss exceeding five rupees cannot be set off. So let's say you have a you have two properties and both properties put together, you are having a loss of three lakh rupees. So maximum loss that you can set off is only 2 lakh rupees. But at the same time, just keep this in mind that this 1 lakh rupees will get carried forward to next year. Now, once we'll go to that carry forward, we'll uh, check that. Now, where is the confusion? So the confusion is, as far as the self-occupied property is concerned, the limit for interest is of 2 lakh rupees. And in this sector, also there are the cap of two lakh rupees. So what people misunderstood, or there is still a confusion, uh, uh, that I'll repeat once again: you can still claim whatever interest is applicable on, on the rate of property. So the restriction is not on the interest on rate of property. The restriction is on the overall loss that you can set off as far as the house property is concerned. And there is a 
cap of 2 lakh rupees as far as this clause is concerned. Then, uh, point number 7 and 8, uh, we have already discussed loss from purchase of securities. It is similar to point number 3. And the last point is no adjustment of loss against undisclosed income. So, if there is an undisclosed income, and in case there is any loss in that case, this loss cannot be set off against any other income. So, uh, obviously, this is a very obvious provision that undisclosed income, and therefore, the loss cannot be set off. So, these are the overall provisions as far as the inter trade adjustment is concerned. loss if you carry forward the house property loss it has to be so uh, let's say i have got some uh, house property loss this year which cannot be set off against any other head so that carried forward to next year but the point is next year whenever it will get carried forward it has to be or it can be set off property. Now, these keep this in mind that if you have got a house property loss, then set off is possible against salary income. But if it is carried forward to next year, then whenever it will be carried forward in the next year, it can be set off only against the house property income. Now, for how many years? This, this uh, house property loss can be carried forward. It can be carried forward for eight years. Whether the business should be continued, of course, there is no business involved in this. So uh, 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 there is no uh, business continuation. In all these cases, uh, we are going to see that whether the return should be filed in time. Now, one more important point. If the if there is no return filed, then obviously you won't be able to claim that benefit. Right. 
second point is as far as speculation loss is concerned so speculation loss can be set off only against speculative profit speculation loss can be carried forward only for four years it is not necessary that the business should be continued but the return say the client approaches to us if there is a loss return we make sure that we make sure in the sense we insist the client that they should give the data in time and we make sure that the uh, return is filed within the due date otherwise the loss won't be carried forward right third is unabsorbed depreciation now before we go into this uh, we should always make a distinction between the pure business loss and unabsorbed depreciation okay so uh, it has to be shown separately now what are the advantages we'll uh, see in a while but basically uh, for depreciation unabsorbed depreciation there is no limit as to for how many years you can carry forward this unabsorbed depreciation but for business loss there is a limit of 8 years and therefore it has to be separately shown right now as far as unabsorbed depreciation is concerned uh, it can be carried forward without any limit <coughs> and it can be any set off against any income other than salary now whether the return should be filed in time it is not necessary in time right then loss from a specified business it can be set off only against a uh, profit from a specified business and it is not necessary but the return has to be filed in time the difference that for uh, loss from specified business as, a, as well as other business losses it is required or there is a requirement that the return should be filed in time for claiming unabsorbed depreciation there is no such requirement so even if you have not filed the return in time still you can claim the benefit of unabsorbed depreciation next point is other business loss that is apart from unabsorbed depreciation and loss from specified business uh, any other business loss can be set off against any business profit there is a limit of 8 years it is not necessary that the business should be continued but return has to be filed in time so uh, first point was regarding the house property point number 2 3 4 and 5 are related to business profit the next point next two points are related to capital gain so short term capital loss can be set off against any income under the head capital gain maximum 8 years you can carry forward this short term capital loss uh, it is not necessary that the business should be continued but the return has to be filed in time long term capital loss can be set off only against the long term cap capital gain limit is of 8 years it is not necessary that the business should be continued but the return has to be filed in time and the last point is loss from from owning and maintaining resources it can be set off only against income from owning and maintaining the resources the time limit is of 4 years the business should be continued then only this set off is possible and the return has to be filed in time so uh, i have tried to summarize this in a table format so that uh, it will be very easy to understand and uh, identify the differences between the various provisions now there is a common belief that uh, there are certain restrictions in that also of course this is one of the major reasons of taking over loss making companies so that the companies will get benefited out of the uh, uh, tax and they can enjoy that unabsorbed depreciation and uh, losses now as far as the business loss and unabsorbed depreciation is concerned in case of amalgamation or demerger uh, there are certain 
the first condition is regarding uh, the nature of the company so case number 1 is if the amalgamating company is the company owning an industrial undertaking or a hotel then it can be amalgamated with any company and that amalgamated company will be able to take the benefit of an absorb depreciation as well as uh, business business loss case number 2 is any banking company if it is there then the amalgamated company has to be a specified bank that is sbi or <coughs> subsidiary of sbi that means uh, if a manufacturing company takes over a, a bank then they will not be able to obviously take the benefit it has to be sbi or its uh, subsidiary company then case 3 is uh, one or more public sector company then the amalgamated company also has to be one or more public sector company and finally an erstwhile public sector company uh, again the amalgamated company has to be one or more public sector company then apart from that there are a uh, few more conditions condition number 1 we have seen that which company should be amalgamated with which uh, type of uh, industry or company a uh, condition number 2 is the amalgamating company has been engaged in the business in which the accumulated loss occurred or depreciation remains unabsorbed for 3 years or more years that means the company should be in existence for minimum 3 years or more then only you will be able to take the benefit of unabsorbed depreciation and business loss then in the current year and in the current year itself it gets amalgamated with some different company so uh, obviously this will be a kind of uh, tax evasion so the provision says whatever unabsorbed of depreciation that you are claiming those assets those assets at least 2 years for debt of amalgamation then the next condition is uh, <coughs> amalgamated continues to hold at least 3/4 of the book value of the asset of the amalgamating company which has which it has uh, acquired as a result of amalgamation for 5 years from the effective date of amalgamation see basically uh, again the intention is very clear that uh, the amalgamating company has already claimed a uh, benefit of an uh, amalgamation or the depreciation so therefore the amalgamated company at least continue with the 3/4 of the assets for a period of 5 years from the date of so as far as the amalgamation is concerned one may feel that whatever unexpected losses are there those automatically will get conditions are fulfilled not then only you will be able to absorb the depreciation and or the business losses right as far as the amalgamation is concerned and the last two conditions are uh, the amalgamated company which has acquired an industrial under undertaking of the amalgamating company by way of amalgamation shall achieve the level of of at least 50% of the installed capacity of the said undertaking before the end of 4 years from the date of amalgamation and continues to maintain the said minimum level of production uh obvious competing company will have employees it will have uh, certain vendors so uh, if you suddenly stop that business then obviously those vendors and employees will get affected and therefore it is necessary that you should attain that uh, uh, production level and you should continue with that business and the last point is uh, the amalgamated company shall 
electronically furnish an uh, to the assessing officer a certificate in the 62 form 62 from a, the books of accounts and other documents showing the particulars of production certificate should be submitted along with the return of income for assessment year relevant to the previous year during the which the prescribed level of production is achieved and for the subsequent assessment year relevant to the previous year following within 5 years from the date of amalgamation now uh, again an opportunity for our fraternity because please understand this point that uh, compared to chartered accountants cost accountants are more well versed with the uh, capacity utilization install capacity uh, and uh, whether they have achieved the production level or not so uh, it will be very good if uh, along with chartered accountant even the cost accountant's name is included in this form uh, 62 so that will be a good entry point as far as uh, the cost accountants are concerned in the uh, area of uh, amalgamation and in turn the income tax also uh, in the recent budget uh, for inventory valuation they have uh, included uh, the name of cost accountant so that is a welcome step however that is not for all the inventory valuation if the government fills then they may uh ask cost accountants to do the inventory valuation independently but nonetheless at least uh, the in a way there is entry in the income tax act so even uh, in this form 62 as far as the amalgamation and particularly when it comes to uh, certifying whether the production level is achieved and all that at least the cost accountants should be considered and the last point is about the bonus scripting so bonus scripting loss uh, in the 2022 budget this particular provision X is going to issue bonus units in the ratio of varies. For when the actual bonus are now what it does is he sells 500 unit that is original units for 500 rupees so his cost of acquisition was 1000 and he is selling it at 500 rupees thus he makes a loss of 250000 out of this sale now this 250000 is a short term capital loss 
and just now we have seen that the short term capital loss can be set off against the long term capital gain the way is not possible that is long term capital loss can be set off against short term capital gain but short term capital loss can be set off against long term capital gain so just keep this in mind that he has made a loss of 2 lakh 50 thousand rupees which is a short term capital loss right then after one year that is after uh, one year means those units will now become or those shares will now become long term he share he sells those bonus units also now since the cost of acquisition for bonus is zero right so whatever uh, proceeds he receives from the sale of those bonus shares that will become his long term capital gain now what he does is he set offs this short term capital loss made from the original units which he has sold against the long term capital gain he has made from the bonus units so subsequently the capital gain after this set off if it is greater than 1 lakh it will be taxed at the rate of 10% only right so what he does is this is i would not say exactly like an insider trading but this is a kind of insider trading wherein he gets to know that the company is about to issue some bonus shares from some insider information and it does this kind of uh, bonus splitting so earlier uh, government was knowing this particular thing but uh, this was not there probably but in the last budget that is budget 2022 they have made this particular point and uh, whatever loss that you get from this bonus splitting that is not allowed now the biggest question is how do we track this because uh, now coming back to the practical aspect of this you are a consultant or a person and he makes the transactions now even we have certain clients wherein the transactions uh, in the shares typically runs into so uh, the issue arises that how do we track done kind of bonus number so very frankly uh, out of uh, so many thousands of transactions it will be very very difficult to trace out as to whether he has done any bonus splitting or not and that is uh, a challenge but yes uh, as a good consultant you should ask them particularly whenever bonus shares are sold you should check whether this kind of uh, bonus splitting he has done so uh, So one condition is the actor buys or acquires securities, which is also called as holding the units or holding the securities within a period of three months prior to the recording. Recording is when the bonus shares are actually issued. So any purchase prior to three months from the recording. Such person is allotted additional units or securities without any payment on the basis of holding of such units or securities. These are generally called as bonus shares or bonus. All or any of the original units or securities within a period of nine months after the recording. Now, why nine months? Because from The, the condition says that he should not buy it three months prior to record date, and he, if he has sold <laughs> within nine months, so understand the uh, meaning: three months prior to record date and nine months after the record date. That makes a period of one year. So the example which we saw in that, so we are saying that uh, if it is a short term loss, then only this bonus will be coming into play. Months and nine months. But if it is sold, all the bonus units. So, ah, uh, this and because the condition conditions are satisfied. The is it back out of the effort and original units of no. Income. It's not a short term. 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 It's not a short term
So this loss will be treated as the cost of acquisition for the bonus shares and accordingly the calculation will be done. Right, so this is the concept of uh, bonus tipping. Uh, I hope I have explained it uh, uh, in a simpler manner. Right, I think this, this example also will help you to understand uh, uh, what is the exact meaning right <clears throat> so uh, this is all about set up and carry forward yes uh, any doubts in this Sir, bonus shares will be treated as a long term capital gain. Is it? Sir? Hello? Amit, your voice is not clear. Hello. Amit, sir, can you repeat because it is not clear. It is getting clear. Mr. Can you repeat because a lot of uh, voice is not clear. Not able to hear. Can you hear me? Amit, can you hear me? Amit, can you hear me? Amit, can you hear me? Hello, Amit, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Now is it better? Because in between, uh, voice was not clear, yeah, not able to hear what you are saying. So if you repeat, that will be better. Okay, now is it clear? Yeah, now it is clear. If you repeat again, that will be better. Sure, sure, I'll do that. Uh, there is a question. Last from house property. 
and the return has been filed in time in year 2 uh, there is a positive income but the return has not been filed in time will it affect the carry over first year which uh, which could not be adjusted in year 2 so basically the provision is very clear uh, let's assume that there was a loss of 2 lakh rupees and in year 2 there is a positive income of 50000 rupees year 1 return was filed in time so you can very much carry forward that loss of 2 lakh rupees to year 2 in year 2 there is a positive income of 50000 rupees so still there is a leftover of but the return for year 2 is not filed in time that does not affect the carry forward of loss of year 1 so even if for year 2 the return has not been filed in time the like 50,000 rupees of loss for year one, we still get carried forward to year three. But let's take a second case that one you are having two lakh rupees of loss. Year two also, there is a loss of one lakh rupees, but you have not filed a return in time. Loss won't get carried forward to year three, but year one loss will get carried forward to year three. So the criteria or the <coughs> rule is for that actual assessment year and if in that assessment year if the return is filed in time for that year you will get the carry forward exemption or carry forward uh, benefit but the year in which you have not filed the return in time and as per the provision there is a requirement of filing the return in time then for that year that loss won't get carried forward and that is the reason why i explained in the uh, uh, provision also that uh, whenever any to us and if he is having a loss so we make sure that the return will be filed in time otherwise he will be deprived from the benefit of carry forward of loss is that clear uh cma dilip if you can uh, confirm that your query has been resolved we can move to the next uh, question or if you want to uh, ask anything you can unmute yourself and oh, okay thanks okay any other uh, queries as i said at the beginning uh, comparatively this is a smaller topic uh, that is uh, clubbing set off and carry forward but nonetheless uh, it is very much important to understand uh, the practical implications of this because uh, many times uh, these things are skipped and even if uh, as a tax consultant or tax practitioners uh, if we don't ask this question and if we simply go by the income that is uh, or the documents which are produced to you then there is a problem and there could be uh, notices in the future also about the non inclusion of income particularly for say minor child or uh, spouse and all that Uh, wrong advices also which are typically uh, done so for example let's say uh, we were talking about the clubbing of clubbing of income when the asset is transferred to spouse without adequate consideration now uh, little funny side of it uh, one of the tax consultant advised the client that see the provision says that the relationship of husband and wife has to be there so that SSE was about to get married. So that tax concern that see the provision says that if the uh, asset is transferred after marriage, then it will attract uh, the clubbing provisions. So better way, what you do is before you get married, you transfer that asset to your uh, would be wife so that this clubbing provisions won't get attracted. Now the effect of that, what happened was unfortunately, uh, he transferred that asset to his uh, would-be wife and then she got a property of around two, two and a half crore rupees and then she changed the mind and she changed the mind that uh, she will not that particular guy because she already got that property of two and a half crores. So uh, my sincere request is don't give such crazy advices because just to save some tax, otherwise uh, uh, the entire asset could be at stake. But yes, uh, we feel that uh, again, 
there has to be clarity about the definition of related party so uh, we feel that even spouse falls under the definition of related person that is not the case when we say related person there has to be a blood relation so for example all your linear ascendants and linear descendants are included in the definition of a related person so for example in your case your father your your parent, grandparents your maternal uh, maternal grandparents uh, will be considered as related then your son your daughter your real brother your real sister will be considered as related person not your cousins and all that so your will be considered as your related any transfer without uh, adequate uh, consideration and in fact that is one of the reasons why uh, there is a demand that uh, like in us uh, and uh, other european a few other european countries there is a concept of combined return that means for a family as such to file a return so if that is done then this all this clubbing and all these provisions uh, could be done away with uh, hopefully in coming years uh, those concepts uh, may get implemented in india but in india uh, the things are not that straight forward as compared to us and uh, other european countries but yes so that is one of the <coughs> sorry one of the demands by many uh, uh, ssc that we should uh, uh, implement a concept of family return rather than filing the individual return of husband wife and uh, children separately so the point provision carefully scrutinize the income carefully and accordingly you have to uh, give the uh, or you have to do the adjustment in this way check up and carry forward there are many uh, tax payers with uh, they give wrong advice to the clients and uh, because of that the entire tax planning can get lost and there are many uh, this is also particularly we uh, also have faced this issue particularly those who are from that they I'm really very sorry today. There is some problem with the connectivity, so uh, I tried several uh, connections, but somehow there seems to be some problem with practically all the networks. So I'm very sorry about that.
any other doubts? Otherwise, uh, If you have any question to ask, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Amit sir, I think no doubts are there. Can we close the session? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, would like, minute, I would like to thank CMA Amit Shahane for his excellent presentation and explaining various provisions related to uh, clubbing of income, uh, set off, etc. Various provisions related to clubbing of, clubbing of income and set off, etc. I also would like to thank uh, WRC staff for their continuous support and uh, all the participants for attending the session. Our last session of the series of webinar on Excel Micro will be on Monday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. I will request all to attend the session. With this, I will declare as today's session is over. Thank you. Thank you.